Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This is part three of uh, vCenter uh, installation and configuration. So in the previous video, what we did, we uh, we downloaded the vCenter CD. We also created the DNS records. We and we started the stage one of vCenter installation. And we uh, so at the end of the video, we so this is how it, it went at the end of the video it took around uh, it took around for me around uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, probably a bit more and sometimes it takes a little bit more uh, and and uh, while the installation of the par stage one is going on what happens you will observe your cpu on the esxi host because the vm because the vcsa appliance is being hosted on on the ESXi host that we have 50 and uh, so this is one of the VMs uh, here and right after this I'm going to show you where the VM is the CPU can go up to 94 here it shows 94 percent that is absolutely normal uh, so for for VCSA is being when VCSA is being installed inside or uh, hosted actually inside ESXi host at the end of stage one what happens is you will get this message you have successfully deployed vCenter and to further configure and move on to stage two uh, you need to use this path here so this path is http colon uh, double front slash 192 10.40 which is our vCenter ip address and we also need to use this port colon uh, 5480 so let's get started so so I mean uh so i am in my so this is my windows server from where i am connecting to connecting to my esxi host and i also have my esxi uh, this is the esxi server it's working fine all i need to do is to log into the esxi host first so let's log in and sometimes when you log in onto the windows machine after so long it might not be that smooth to be connected it might not be that smoothly connected so you might have to maybe close the browser connect again uh, at in order to connect to those so here I'm connecting to the host machine and within the host machine it shows me CPU is sitting at uh, at 71% why because the VM is running the VCSA appliance is running and this is the VCSA appliance display sign uh, shows that it is running at the moment and uh, and the VCSA appliance is working so what's next after this so guys what's next after this we need to go move on to the stage 2 so uh, in order to move on to the stage 2 as we said we need to open another browser and go to the link So this is the link. So we, uh, whenever you connect to the uh, VCSA appliance in order to conf in order to configure the appliance, we need to use this port. So whenever after the IP address, we use colon sign and use a number. That is basically the port on which we are connecting to a certain application. In this case, this port is used for VCSA. And if I press enter, it takes me to nowhere because there is a problem with the with the there is a typo in here so i'm going to change this because that was httpd i i typed here it should be https so once it goes here now if vcsa is installed then it would give you a different screen whereas uh, here since we still need to complete stage two of uh, vcenter installation for that reason it took us to this window and uh, remember that this window we saw that in, in in the previous video where it took us here and it was almost the same screen it was saying upgrade migrate restore but here it was install so now it's not saying install it's saying set up so i'm going to set up here and i'm going to use the root password that i chose last time So 
it's our password and I am connecting and it starts from it starts the setup from exactly the same place where it stopped so stage one is finished now I'm about to go to stage two and stage two these are the questions that it needs to ask for so the question number one is we center server configuration so here we center configuration we did that in stage one uh, here we just need to verify the same configuration it is retrieving the current settings from VCSA and since uh, we are connecting from this Windows host and we are going into ESXi host there uh, where the VM is hosted so here we said that it is assigned static IP address it is IPv4 and here the the system name is local host so here I'm gonna just name it according to what we named it so that will be 360 cloud VCSA01 And here we do need to put a uh, FQDN. FQDN, you know, fully qualified domain name, and that is with the domain name. And that domain name, we configured that in our DNS settings uh, on the same server. So this server is an Active Directory server as well. So this is the fully qualified domain name here. If you see the information, either you can type the uh, type the you can leave it as is as local host or you if you need, you can type a full name or the IP address. So here you get the IP address, the subnet mask. And here, if you if you need to here, you can uh, uh, time sync for the time sync it will be syncing the time of the VCSA with the ESXi host because the VM is sitting on this ESXi host it's just saying that you need to sync it with that or most of the time even in the real environment we sync it to a NTP server and NTP server is basically our domain controller so here i'm going to enter the password of the domain controller meaning this server is our domain controller and i'm going to use the ip address of this server here or i can use a name of the domain controller with fqdn and what is the main purpose of this this main purpose is that the time that we see on the domain controller will be the same time on VCSA and same time on on all the uh, uh, same time on this uh, essentially this setting is that the and the time server will be uh, this server so whatever time we see here that the same time will be on VCSA so this is the time server mostly it's the domain controller and if you're aware of Active Directory this will be the PDC emulator role and in our case we have only one domain controller so that server has all the five FISMO roles and PD simulator role is this server. Second one is SSH. SSH we are going to enable and later in another video I'm going to show you how to connect to VCSA through SSH. SSH is a secure shell login. So here enable, here the IP address and next. So it is saving the time syncing, time sync settings. At the same time, we also provided the SSH. SSH is basically a command line interface to VCSA. So we can configure VCSA either through SSH. SSH meaning that it will, we can use command lines. We can use commands to configure or troubleshoot, uh, troubleshoot uh, a VCSA appliance. So this is uh, done and here it says session is expired. I'm going to log in again. So it's taking a few minutes and it's saving the time sync setting. It is saving the IP address. So I'm going to wait for a few minutes once this is done. So once that is done, I pressed next and it took us to the SSO settings. SSO is single uh, sign on setting. And this is basically the setting where uh, we are going to set up a single domain for this. So here, uh, we, so here the default, the, the domain I'm going to use is vSphere.local. Uh, vSphere.local domain and uh, so normally this is the default domain that we use for all our uh, VCSA domain if it is not connected to Active Directory. 
So I'm going to say vSphere.local and the username will be administrator and this is a very very important password. So this password always remember. This password will be used to log into VCSA. So here you need to keep in mind that uh, the administrator, the username will be administrator at the rate vSphere.local and the password is the password that you choose for your VCSA appliance. You can also connect to your existing single sign-on domain. If you have a single sign-on domain, you can join it there. And if you select here, it will give you some more settings here. So I'm not going to use that setting. I'm going to create our first SSO domain that uh, you can join existing SSO so domain when you have other vCenters available. So for now, domain name, administrator, and the password. Here it's just a customer, a, a customer experience improvement program and you can have a look at it. Otherwise, just click next. And after this, it will show you whatever settings we did. And if you want to make any changes, you can go back. Otherwise, you can just finish and click OK. It says you will not be able to pause or stop the install from here. The configuration is about to start. And uh, so once this is all configured, after that, we will uh, we will connect to vCenter and we'll see that how do we further configure or use VCSA appliance in this infrastructure. So the setup is going on, setup is in progress, services on the vCenter are starting up and starting VCSA configuration. So I'm going to pause the video here. Once this is done, I'm going to start the recording. Oh, uh, we got an error message. The problem occurred during message. So here I'm going to retry. So sometimes this message will, uh, will appear and this specific message is due to the name those applied names so uh, there might be some problem with the dns name so if you get this error message it means uh, that there is some problem with this name vcsa01 so i'm going to make sure that this name is available in order to make sure there are a few ways we can go to our domain controller which is this domain controller and uh, so on this domain controller i'm going to go to dns and within dns first of all i'm going to make sure that this name was that we created that name earlier i'm going to go here and here oh uh, there is that name uh, 360 cloud dot vcsa01 name is available and somehow and the name is 360 cloud dot vcsa 360 cloud dot local okay so that name is available now the second way i need to troubleshoot that if this that if this name can ping or resolve to a name, if this uh, if the if the name resolve to an IP address, so here. So uh, first, I'm gonna just ping the VCSA. It is pinging. Secondly, I'm gonna use minus a here. To resolve this IP address to name and the name is resolving and the name is correct as well and so here I just want to make sure that this name is absolutely correct I'm gonna just select this right click on this I copied this uh, 360 cloud and the error that I was that we are getting in here is 360 cloud VCSA01 01.360cloud.local and that is exactly the same name we are using. I'm not sure then why is it failed because uh, the error is that it's saying uh, the supplied system name. If the supplied system name is an FQDN then make sure the DNS forward lookup results as that list of one valid IP address. This is what we just, just checked. Here we can just check uh, 360CLOUD uh, VCSA01 dot 360 dot local so it's, it looks all good uh, we don't have any other choice other than to cancel this other than to
cancel this installation and start again so I'm gonna go back uh, now even in the real environment you should be ready to see these types of error messages so here I am we can we can close this so this is all closed and I'm gonna go back to so I'm not gonna go into the logs here I'm just gonna go back to to the to the client and I'll try to read rerun the installation So once I try to connect to this, it's saying that this vCenter cannot be used or repaired because the because the failure was encountered. You need to deploy a new vCenter. Wow. Okay. So so I'm gonna just try to connect to the vCenter uh, one more time. So I'm gonna go into my VCSA, connect to this VM, go to the console. So this is the vCenter what we have installed and we were trying to connect to this console here. Uh, now the other way around is that if I can try to connect to this vCenter. Without the port number. So without the port number because it's not installed and with the port number it won't let, let us log in. So the only way around this is to reinstall the vCenter again. So when I'm trying to reconnect again, I'm just trying that, that I can, if I can reconnect. It won't because uh, we did the second stage two configuration, but it, uh, but it crashed in the middle. So since it crashed in the middle, it's just saying that this vCenter cannot be repaired. So all I have to do, I have to pause the video and I'll reinstall stage one and then stage two as well. Okay, before I can end this video and create another video for installing vCenter. Uh, so what I did, I tried to troubleshoot this and in order to troubleshoot, I found this article saying that I need to restart the services. So if you get this error message, uh, you can just go here and try to restart uh, the services. And how do you restart the services? You can go, uh, you can log in to the, to the shell and in the shell, you can go to service control, stop all and then start all you can run these commands on the server I mean this is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is you can go to uh, go to your VM here and within the VM you can just restart the VM so I restarted the VM and uh, here it just shows me that it shows me the name but the services are still not starting up so um, so so that means that this uh, vCenter is not working properly what I need to do is I need to clean that up and I will restart again so in order to clean that up all I need to do is right click on this VM and delete this VM so I'm gonna just uh, power this off and then delete this VM and recreate the VM again so so for now I'm just gonna right click on this and delete this VM and it will be deleted make sure that it is deleted from the storage so in this video we have seen we've tried to connect to stage 2 and finish the installation but due to some reason it crashed and uh, and in the next video we are going to reinstall vCenter again